thanks very much to, to, to Robert as well to, uh, for setting a rather high bar to follow. Um, uh, again, I, I should just say uh, at the outset, thanks very much to the Western Development Commission, especially Pauline um, and, um, and the people here in CISC and NUIG for supporting what I believe is uh, an area that warrants uh, increasing attention. Uh, so just to talk to what Rob said there in his very interesting talk, I, I want to kind of just ground it more, shall we say, on uh, uh, in, in the Irish level uh, and then more laterally on the kind of um, local level. Uh, having been privy to Rob's slides um, for the last couple of days, I knew what he was going to say, so uh, that made this job quite a bit easier. In terms of what I, what, 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 what I saw from, from reading them, uh, that there, there are three main areas, and I think this is, these are the three main areas that, that we really need to, to look at, at the world that we're living in. And you can just group them together under these rather broad and vague terms, and there are, of course, globalization, the rise of regionalization, clustering, and this kind of new emerging area of culture and creativity. And the importance is how all these things fit together, and how they feed off each other, and how we can um, uh, best uh, use them in, in terms of, of local and national competitiveness. So I want to look at these kind of three areas, I just want to run through them very briefly, um, and then focus on um, exactly what Lisa mentioned, which uh, are two areas of particular local interest to, to us. And uh, this is not to steal any thunder for, for speakers coming after me, but I, I just want to speak briefly about the rise of, of what I see as a very creative cluster uh, uh, on the west coast of, of Galway, west coast of Ireland, uh, in the audiovisual area. And Paul Collins from Telegale will, 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 will speak more in depth about that later on. Also, uh, with work that I've carried out with uh, Dr. Francis Fahey in the Geography Department, I've been looking at, or we've been looking at, Galway and this notion of culture and creativity. And the, the, the importance, basically, in terms of policy, in terms of image creation, that labels like culture and creative have in terms of local economic development. So, globalisation. That was a great heading to a slide. What do you put underneath it? Um, of course, globalisation is actually a process that we're all very old favourite. It is, you look at the, on the streets uh, of Ireland and you see it, both in terms of labels, in terms of names of shops, in terms of people speaking different accents. For me, uh, in terms of my research so far, uh, it really is about these three interlinking factors, coinciding factors. They are, of course, technological advances, Changes in the organisational structures, both of, of, of societies and of firms, and, and policy changes. And of course, Ireland would be a world leader, shall we say, in terms of policy changes towards globalisation. Uh, policies enacted from as far back as 1959 has led to Ireland become, or led to Ireland becoming labelled as the most globalised economy in the world in 2002. And Perhaps, or if not, one of the main reasons for that was its attraction of, of these big names. And of course, globalization, that, that name Dell there is some, one that we'll all be familiar with in the last few months because we've seen how globalization brought Dell to our shores and, and, and gave jobs to, to um, uh, upwards of 4,000 people in this country, but took jobs away from 2,000 of them um, as recently as last January. These are, they are processes of globalization. They are processes of exactly what Rob was talking about in terms of a spiky competitiveness of place. <coughs> Regionalisation and clustering, um, for as much uh, evidence that you can point to uh, of the rise of globalisation, you can point to as much, if not more, evidence of, of, of regionalisation. And I think Rob did that very uh, proficiently in his talk. Uh, of course, uh, the UK example is one of, 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 of a, of a north-south divide. The Irish example is very much one of an east-west divide. And the question has been asked, you know, was the Celtic tiger, God rest its soul, uh, was, was that economic experience in Ireland simply just the experience of, of, of a Dublin city region? Or, or, or can we call it a, a, a national economic uh, entity? Um, in a lot of ways, you can put regionalisation, this rise of, of, of these spikes, you can cut them as a contradiction to the, to the flatness that globalisation brings. But of course, 
they are uh, both part of each other. They're continuing and they constantly feed off each other. You know, you cite the example, and everybody will cite the example of Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is as responsible for globalization as it is responsible or emblematic of, a, of, of the rise of, of, of a region or cluster of, of innovative um, and creative significance. And these debates have been going on for, for, for quite uh, a, a, a significant amount of time and are equally as relevant um, uh, today as they were 50 years ago or as far back as, as almost a century ago when Alfred Marshall was talking about it. Um, <clears throat> on to how this kind of all fits with the uh, notion of culture and creativity. I'd, I'll start off there with a quote from, um, I was going to say Bertie Hearn, no, uh, from Brian Cowell uh, earlier on this year over in New York. And, you know, this, most people encounter Ireland today through culture, whether it's Irish dance, music, Irish film, Irish writing, or Irish, uh, or an Irish play on Broadway. You know, I mean, uh, you know, even even as far back or, or not, even 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 last week um, when the, the great injustice, uh, which the unspoken injustice of Thierry Henry uh, happened, uh, it was quoted in one of the papers, a, a Swedish paper, I think, that you know, 18 million Irish people around the world uh, will will blame the, a Swedish referee. Um, but you know, this is part, of course, this is recognition of a huge um, Irish diaspora as well, which is also of of. Um, equal importance. And it's these things that are, that are, are gaining recognition. Um, they're gaining recognition at a policy level. Um, they're gaining recognition through the kind of, um, through um, enterprise agencies, be they the um, IDA or Enterprise Ireland, that this is something that we can sell Ireland as internationally. And James already uh, mentioned at the outset the, the number of, of internationally renowned artists that we have out there. But there is something there, there is something of the air, as Marshall would say. And um, having uh, kind of found, researched my way into this area through looking at, at uh, foreign direct investment in Ireland, the importance that, that, that um, many people place on choosing Ireland as a location to invest in, the importance placed on these kind of very soft factors um, is increasingly noted. You know, if it's the three G's of Guinness Golf and Good Crack, as to as good a reason as any to, to invest in Ireland. Or, you know, the, the kind of, um, I have a small picture down there of Facebook. You know, Facebook uh, had constantly cited the, the creativity of, of the Irish people as, a, as um, a, a, a prime incentive to locate their uh, European operations within Ireland. Of course, this all feeds into the, the creative industries literature as well, which is something that has really kind of boomed over the last um, decade or so. And it's all about the positive virtues of, of you know, ha of, of, of having creative industries in a locale. They are sustainable, they are innovative, they're forward-looking, they're attractive, they're green, and, you know, they're cast in with this particular dye of, of, of being, of being, um, Something that um, that every lo every uh, locality needs. Um, a recent report by the um, the Arts Council, which was published a, a couple of weeks ago, shows the um, extent of the creative industries uh, in Ireland. Now, I mean, there are questions over the methodology used here, but for the uh, sake of, of of not going on too long, let's just. Having a look at it, I mean, the gross value added of the creative industries to the Irish economy is fairly significant, uh, five and a half um, billion. Employment then uh, in creative industries in Ireland equates to nearly 100,000 um, people. Uh, at a sub kind of national scale, I refer to Pauline and Eames and Lisa's work in, in the Western Development Commission uh, in their report, uh, which looked at the creative industries. Um, within the Western region, as they define it, you see a very significant amount of, of businesses employing, directly employing, uh, upwards of 11,000 people, which is 3% of the workforce, again, significant, with high turnover, 
um, uh, direct and indirect uh, GBA of uh, significant importance to uh, the local economy. Uh, I, I, I've uh, pasted in two graphs there from a, a recent uh, European Union report which shows border uh, Midlands and, uh, and Western uh, region as one of the regions with the greatest dynamic uh, change over seven years from 2000 to 2007 in terms of human capital indices. Uh, and these are, are really important, they are really important. And again, these are things that are, that are cited by investors from, from um, outside of Ireland, is the importance of, of human capital. And factors and statistics like this uh, paint a very positive picture uh, for the creative industries and for the region uh, as a whole. So just briefly then to um, have a quick look at, at, at a particular creative industry um, in the West, taking the film and production companies. And I, I am a geographer, even though the map might belie that fact. Um, um, it is rather hastily drawn up. I mean, what you see is pretty much what you would see in many uh, high-tech companies in terms of spatial distribution in Ireland. And that is very, very heavy concentration in uh, the Dublin city region. Um, I've drawn up a similar map uh, for, for software firms and the, um, and the, and the spread is, is, more, is more or less mimicked, except for this little uh, red area that, that, that I've highlighted, which is um, just west of Galway City. Um, and again, not to uh, step on uh, anybody's toes, I'm sure Paul will more adequately and more eloquently in greater depth talk about what happened there. But of course, you will probably know that a lot of that has to do with the establishment of TG Cattle um, in Inver, um, and it must be 12, 13 years ago now, um, has led to this kind of, has acted as a growth pole and a, as it were, in terms of the kind of mini explosion of, of, of creative, innovative firms operating out there. The whole, uh, I've counted through various uh, databases, 28 companies employing 300 uh, full-time and up to 400 part-time. They differ from the national average in the fact that they're older and they're larger, uh, higher headcount per firm. Um, they have a different focus. Uh, quite a bit of Irish film and television work actually goes on uh, co uh, corporate uh, videos and, and uh, advertising. Uh, whereas uh, here in the West, there's a much greater focus on documentary making and a uh, very internationally competitive uh, animation uh, cluster presented, I suppose, in the main by two or three companies. Um, who have themselves gained international recognition through um, Oscar nominations and Emmy Awards. And the key fact is, uh, from what I can grasp, nearly two thirds of these companies are selling their product internationally. And that is, that is they're either um, uh, co-producing with, with, uh, with uh, production companies located outside Ireland, or they're selling their product to other networks. And that, I think, is a good example of, of, of an innovative model. Um, you know, various quotes kind of um, to, to try and, and sum up the sector. You know, the notion that of, of space transcendence, of decentralization, of globalization are very much evident in the region in terms of work practices between companies that are working in real time with companies located um, you know, 10,000 miles away. Um, Questions, you know, you ask, you ask people where the real digital hub is, and it's 15 miles west of, of Galway City, you know, that is of course in reference to the actual digital hub up in Dublin, because there has this been almost, uh, in some ways it's been a very organic kind of evolution uh, of, of, of uh, services and uh, orientated um, production companies um, in the Inverne region. And culture, again, I mean, it is, is, is naturally important. It's, it's important in the sense of language and um, the, the, the kind of history and how much the sector owes to the TG CAC and its formation. Okay, so now just to kind of bring it down to the city level of ex 
um, extrapolation, and I'll be brief here if I can. Um, Galway City, a creative city, of course, question mark, has to be placed after it. In many ways, it will uh, earn the label of a creative city, whether it deserves it or not, and there are plenty of reasons to term it as such. Um, of course, Galway Arts Festival would be a, a, a key signature of that. It's a very carefully constructed city for those, I mean, we've all been to cities elsewhere, and we've all uh, read various literature on cities, be it tourist literature or whatnot, and um, you can gain a, um, a fair enough understanding, but the understanding that you gain, or the kind of impression that you're given of Galway before you actually ever set foot in place, is one that is very carefully constructed around these types of images. And, um, and it does provide a harmonious mix in terms of, in reference to what Robert had been saying earlier on, in terms of the creative class. I haven't actually uh, worked out figures for the actual percentage of creative class, but you're looking at um, a very harmonious mix within the city. I mean, James has already mentioned the kind of medical uh, technologies cluster that has arisen. But there is a significant kind of um, software development cluster uh, in, in, in Galway as well. And you, so you have this kind of, yes, as I mentioned, this kind of overlap between creative and innovative. And all these things, you know, are cited by business leaders in Galway. And uh, one multinational that's set up here um, said, well, it would make a lot of sense to set it up here because it is a very attractive place to attract your workers to. Um, um, so, you know, that we can attract people from all over the western seaboard. So, rather than call it a city with a population of 80,000, these guys are referring to it as a city with a potential population of 500,000 to choose from. But of course, that is all, <laughs> um, that is all that, that's one side of the story. The reality is there is a contested ownership in terms of Galway, and especially the creative and cultural label of Galway. And, you see, what, what this is, is, I suppose, um, a kind of two very separate entities within the city, and that is one that's very much commercially orientated and one that's very much arts orientated. And how the two mix together, and whether the two mix together well, is, is very much open for question. There are um, examples of arts organisations that feel like you know, their intellectual property have, has essentially been hijacked by a, a commercial agenda to promote the city, to promote the city as a, as a cultural kind of entity. And there's notions that the, the, the idea of labelling to cultural capital you know, to some is, is a step too far. And city redevelopment in terms of Kian Station um, proposed redevelopment you know, are laughable to kind of give the, 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 the place the label a creative city if the proposed development only leaves 1.5% uh, dedicated towards creative spaces. Um, so, I mean, while there is a lot of buy-in to um, both the kind of cultural city, creative city label, and creative industries, there is a need, of course, to um, be, so, be wary of, of what it is um, that we are getting ourselves into. Jamie Peck, um, an economic geographer, has, of course, cited the, the, the fact that um, it is the strategies, the, the, the notion of creativity, the notion of, of cultural cities, of creative class, very much sits in very well with the kind of neoliberal status quo. And that what we're doing, you know, is, is the repackaging of cultural artifacts as competitive assets is really a step towards the commodification of arts. And, I mean, we see that in, in, in Galway, and especially, you know, I have a picture there on the last slide of, of the opening of the, the Latin Quarter in Galway City. Um, you know, it, it's something that um, somebody has yet to explain to me, and I'm sure to a lot of other people, where exactly that name came from. But, um, you know, the Latin Quarter is, of course, represented by, by, by commercial interests. Um, uh, there's this notion of Guggenheiming as well, which I think is a, is a, is a word I, I just coined myself. And the idea that you can change, you know, you can change the, 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 the face or place of the city through the kind of, um, through urban uh, regeneration that basically follows the lines of successful examples that have happened around the world, be it the Bell Bowels, be it the uh, Glasgow's, and that in some way 
you know, you, you can strike it differently. But this is, of course, again, about this race to the bottom in terms of, of competitiveness. Um, if, you keep on, if, you, if you keep on following um, what's gone on, um, then the chances are you, you will get less from those that you have followed. Um, so finally, I mean, while, while there, there, there are things to be wary of, I mean, the potential of this area, um, the potential of creative industries, um, for me, really could be something very unique in terms of, of, of Ireland and their contribution to economic development within Ireland and within the Western region. Um, as I said, my entry point to this kind of area had been through a kind of more hard economic analysis. And recognition of the importance of creativity and innovation is, um, I suppose, is starting to proliferate. And as it does, um, I suppose we could get closer to um, an answer in terms of finding our ways out of the economic recession. Um, Again, as I cited in terms of the example of um, Inverne, um, there are examples of an indigenous innovation model that combines what I would see as the unique strengths of place-based Irishness and in terms of its ability to do that, that allows us to compete in terms of comparative and competitive advantage uh, internationally. Um, Again, the, there are issues of space transcendence that creative industries, by their very nature, are likely to look beyond the local in terms of the global and finding a good global mix and putting that in the right proportions will be very important going forward. The question is, what's the place for policy and all that? And I suppose, uh, in terms of that, and leaving that question mark there, I can open it up to um, questions.